Okay, yeah. so uh, we've got loads of bits to get through on this. Um, Dave's part's one of the busier parts for this uh, song. Um, <clears throat> I've got my hollow body guitar. He tends to use you know hollow bodies. Um, and it's just got a nice sound for this this kind of stuff. And I've also got the amp set up with a slightly less gain. Um, so that's kind of um, my crunch channel. Um, and then I've got a dirtier, but not much dirtier channel there. Um, if you put too much distortion on this guitar part, um, you'll lose some of the nuances of it. So I've left more of the distorted stuff for the other guitar. Um, and like I said, yeah, this one's just a little less um, in your face. <clears throat> I've also got a delay pedal set up um, just for the end bit mainly of the song. Um, just those delay stabs. So it's not entirely necessary. Um, more for the other guitar bits, but um, yeah, there it is. We can talk about the delay uh, later on. So let's look at the first riff. Okay, so for this part, Dave's playing up here at the ninth fret, and um, we've got uh, a nine on the D string and a ten on the A string, and you're just going to be going between these notes. Um, we're going to do this ten times. So, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, and then we're going to click onto a distortion channel uh, and we're going to do a slide down. Um, where I'm just basically going to flatten my fingers across the strings and do that basically. So, I hit it, slid down. Um, then we're going to get into Dave's way of playing the riff. So we're going to use power chord here, the fifth fret on the E string, so which is a five, seven, seven. You can hit this twice. And then we're going to move that same shape up to the eighth fret. So now it's eight, ten, ten. And you can do this three times. So I've gone. So that is down, up, up, down, up. And then we're going to go back to our. 9, 10. So I'm using my second finger for 9. You only do it twice. Back to that riff. And this time we're going to go. So that was 9 on the D, 10 on the A, and then the open D. So I've gone. We're then going to repeat that riff again once more before we get into the verse. Okay, so for the verse, we're going to go back onto our um, crunchy channel. Uh, basically, you're going to be strumming very lightly some chords. And as you strum them, you're going to try and pick some notes out of them. Um, so we start off with an A minor here, down at the uh, open position. Um, and you're going to strum this twice. Three times, sorry. Down, down. So the down part, I'm just aiming for the low part of the chord. On the up, I'm aiming for the higher part of the chord, and then back to the low part. Then we're going to lift our third finger off the D string and go to a C chord. Um, it's just a normal C chord, with the exception of this little finger, which you're going to put um, on the high E string at fret three, and you're going to strum this uh, twice. So it's down on most of the chord, and then up, catching that high note. So we've gone. Okay. Um, then we're going to go to an E minor chord. And the first time through, we're going to play like this. Um, so you can see, uh, I'm basically just trying to move up the chord with each strum and then back down. Um, so the first string, I'm trying to catch it from, say, the um, just like the low three strings. Then the next strum, I'm trying to catch uh, from like the the G string, and then the B, and then the E. So each time you just hear the note get higher, and then back down like that. Um, then we go back, start the riff again, and this time we're just going to go, which was low. So that's what, what I'm going to call one repetition of the verse. Let me play one repetition for you. Okay, 
okay, same thing again, nice and slow. Okay, we're on to kind of the pre-chorus section here. Um, and I'm not actually going to change channel for this bit. Um, I'm just going to hit the strings a bit harder, which is a really cool thing if you've got a nice tube amp because they can be really responsive. And, and you know, you go from a nice... Um, so, you know... You know, a big difference in tone just with the way you're hitting it. You know, obviously the volume went up, but so did the gain. Um, Okay, so for this part, we do start on a D chord, and the strumming pattern is going to go like this. Okay, so that's your first bit. Then we're going to go to an A minor chord, and we're going to be using our little finger to add this third fret on the E string. Um, so it's going to sound like this. So a very similar rhythm, it's going to go like this. Down, up, down, and then up with the note on, up with the note off, up with it on again, off again, up again, off again. So. Then we're going to go to an E minor chord. Now I'm not moving any notes here, but I'm going to try and catch the high E string only on some of the strums, like this. So again, down, up, down. Catch the high note as well. Up uh, without the high note. Up with the high note. Without. With. Without. One more time on that chord. And we're going to go back to the D chord, same as before. Okay. So the whole pre chorus together. Well, at that point, I'm going to click over the distortion. We're going to go to the chorus. So this is based around an F chord. But what I'm doing is I'm using my thumb for the low note here. So my thumb's at fret one on the E string. Then I'm going to have three on the D string with finger three. Two on the G with finger two. One on the B with finger one. Um, and then similar to the last time, I'm going to be using my fourth finger to be adding this third fret note on the high E on and off. So it's going to sound like this. There's three strums without. And then you're going to catch the upstroke with that note. And then without, with, without, with, without, like this. Okay. Then we're going to go to an A minor chord, same as before, adding the note and taking it off. Back to the E minor, same deal moving the high note, well, picking out the high note. And then we've got uh, some octaves. Dave loves his octaves. The Foos love their octaves. That's what I've discovered, having covered so many Foo Fighters songs. Um, octaves are cool. They're rocky, they're cool. Um, so what we've got is, uh, we start off with an octave at D, which is the fifth fret on the A string, and then you miss the D, and we'll just mute it, and then you've got the seventh fret on the G, and we're going to go like this. Okay, so that was down, up, down on the D, up, down, up, two frets higher at the seventh fret, and then we're going to move another two frets, down, up, down, one fret this time, up, down, up, and then just two more strums at the 12th fret. Okay, so five, seven, nine, ten, twelve. And the whole thing together. Cool, that's kind of the end of the chorus then. So that's put the whole bit together. Alright, 
right, so at this point we're going back to our friend the heavy riff. I've, I've called it the heavy riff. Right, so. <laughs> Again, you can play it twice. At that point, uh, we go back to the verse again, um, just like before. Then we're going to go back to the pre chorus, just like before, then back to the chorus, just like before. Right, into the wicked breakdown. So at the end of the, this, this second chorus, you hear. We're going to break into it, the, the really cool bit. So. Um, this is what it's going to sound like the first bit. Okay, that's kind of your riff. Now, this part has lots of guitar overdubs. I've done my best to make it sound big like the original, but you know, it'll never sound quite as big because um, you know they probably overdubbed it more than the amount of guitarists they've got, and they've already got loads of guitarists. Um, so um, I've kind of had to split bits around here and do clever things with it. I think not clever, but yeah, you know what I mean. Um, <clears throat> now, the first thing we want to talk about with this is the timing, because it's not straightforward. Um, I want you to go back and listen to the song at this point, because if you if you hadn't realised there was something odd going on with the timing. Um, so the count is this: you've got three bars of three four. So three four is just where you have instead of counting to four every bar one two three four one two three four. You count to three. So you've got three lots of three, and then a group of four. So it's going to go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. It's a bit awkward to talk um, uh, the, the count over the top of the riff. So, what we need to do is have a listen to the song, get cue up that part of the song. And what you're listening for is this first strum. You're going to start counting one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And on that four, that last four, you should hear that note. There, that's the four, and then it goes back around. So let's have a look at how to play it. Okay, uh, we're starting with an A power chord, 0, 2, 2, 0 on the A string, 2 on the D, 2 on the G. Then we're going to move up with a little finger to fret 5 on the G string, fret 4, and then open. Then you go into a D chord, and you're going to strum it 4 times, then a C add 9, 4 times. Now what this is, is your second finger on the 3rd fret of the A string, first finger at the second fret of the D string, open G, and then you want three on both of the thin top strings with your third and fourth finger. Okay, and it's going to sound like this. You can strum this four times. So from the start again. D, C add nine. And just for good measure at the end, make it really rocky, you can play the third fret on the E string and bend it up. Okay, so that's kind of the, the first riff thing you're going to play. You're going to do this twice before we move into something else. Okay, at that point, we're going to break off on our own here and play some chords and let the other two guitars divvy up the, the harmony part between them. So the chords are just that A power chord again, twice, and then E minor. The first string of the E minor is low, and then it's high. Two lots of D, two lots of C add nine. Bend on the G again. So let me play all that together. Then you're going to repeat again. Same thing. And then we get to Dave's octave solo. Dave's octave solo. It's a nice one this. We're going to be uh, starting here at the E. 7th fret on the A string, and basically just ascending up, um, playing a certain amount of each one. Uh, very effective, builds a lot of excitement, so let's get into it. Dave's octave solo, so this part, um, I didn't quite play it on, the, uh, on my recording as I've transcribed it. Uh, I made it a little bit more um, uniform, a bit more predictable. Two reasons. One, I was in a hurry <laughs> and I hadn't had time to learn it all, um, note for note, and practice that bit with all of its all of its little um, intricacies. And the reason um, 
I'd not force myself to do that actually is because if you listen to it, it's the kind of thing you probably wouldn't play exactly the same way twice. Um, so I thought this is okay if I kind of vary the rhythm a little bit as long as you get the feel of it. Um, so I'm going to say the same thing to you. You know, get them, get the notes. There are certain bits in this that you're going to want to go for, but if you do put an extra strum in here and there, it doesn't matter. So let me show you the rhythm I played on the recording and you can choose to mess around it if you want to. So we start at the 7th fret on the A string here. Um, so that's 7 on the A, 9 on the um, G. And I'm going to go like this. And then down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up again. And then I'm going to move one more down, but this time at the ninth fret. So, from the start. Then I'm going to move to the 10th fret, so now it's 10 on the A, 12 on the G. And I'm going to play the same rhythm, except this time on the very last strum I'm not going to move up, I'm just going to do one more strum of this same chord. Same directions, and then I'm going to go up to the 12th fret um, and start for the same rhythm. And then at the end I do move for the last strum up to 14 so now that's 14 and 16 then we're going to go up to the 15th fret so it's 15 on the A 17 on the on the G and I'm going to go down down up, up down up down and then up two more frets 17 and 19 down down up okay and that's the end of your octaves so let me play up to that point down to our C add 9 chord and you're going to strum it down up down up four times and then right at the end put that third fret bend on the E string and then an A minor okay let me do the whole thing again nice and slow and then we'll do it up to speed Okay, now that A minor strum is on beat one of the, the kind of the uh, broken down, really quiet, soft, middly bit. Um, so basically we're going to do nothing for eight bars. So that's going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, for eight bars. And then we're going to come back in uh, with our friend the intro riff. Nice and subtle. And you do that ten times again, just like we did before. After that, um, we're going to go into another section I'm not going to show you note for note. I've copped out again. Oh, terrible. Um, again, same excuse applies. Um, he is definitely just kind of making this up. And, and you can, as long as you've got the idea, you can make it up to, you can improvise, so to speak, with it. Um, so the idea is this. You're going to be playing a scale, um, or notes from a scale, on the G string. <laughs> Um, whilst using the open B and E string to kind of fill it out. Um, now the way I did this was a hybrid pick, so I'm using the pick for the G string notes and I'm using these two fingers to finger pick the other notes. So you get this kind of thing. Okay. Um, so the notes you can use on the G string, open note, 2nd fret, 
fourth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, and ninth fret. And he doesn't really go um, any higher than that. So try going up in order, try descending in order, kind of mix and match and jump up and down a little bit. It's all good. And um, what I'm tending to do as a pattern is play a G string note followed by B, then E. It's like lots of little one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three that kind of thing. Um, now he does this for roughly 16 bars. Um, now you might struggle to keep track of that as you're doing this. So what you're gonna have to rely on here is um, kind of your musical instincts a little bit. Um, very rarely when I play live am I counting things per se. Um, what I'm really doing is feeling amounts. You know, after a while, after you've done like four bars of something, you know what four bars of something feels like. Um, you kind of get little mental warnings that you know you come into the end of a big loop and, and so on. Um, so really, my best suggestion here it might not be uh, you might not feel like it's particularly helpful, but is to just try and feel how much of this is sixteen bars worth. At the end of the day, it is a, it's an even amount. Um, you know, four lots of four bars. So yeah, you should be okay. For the next bit, we're going to come out of it into something that I am going to show you what he plays is something quite set. So you go from that nice improvised bit to a, to a nice set part here. So what you can do is play the 12th fret on the G string now and here is your rhythm. Okay, so I'm playing the 12th fret and then sliding down to the 9 and back up. So I'm going to go 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 and slide. And then I'm going to restart the next one by picking the 9 first and sliding into it. That kind of thing, okay? Again, you don't actually have to be too set with it so long as you've got those notes and roughly that rhythm. So you can do that kind of um, counting from the first one as, as being one. You can do it four times, and on the end of the fourth, you just stay on the 12, you don't go back down to the 9. So it's going to go like this. higher so now it's 12 and 14 and we're going to start by picking 12 and hammering on the 14 and you stay on the 14 like that so it's pick and hammer 14 14 14 14, 14 12 so that's kind of one loop and you're going to do that four times The end you stay on the on that 14 so one loop of that sounds like this you can do that four times but on the fourth one we again we're going to vary the ending slightly so it's going to go so that is you, you you stay on the 14 towards the end and keep picking it and move up to 16 so let me play that last repetition once more So from the start of this part, with the notes we want are the 17th fret on the G and the 16th um, you, you're gonna speed the rhythm up a little bit here again you don't have to be too precise about this but we got something roughly like this and then at that point we're gonna go up to 19 and start to um, keep a constant one and two and three and four and picking pattern going and as we're doing that we're, we're gonna bend it up um, so you're aiming to hit the peak of your bend at the end of the bar. So one and two and three and four round. And you can do that um, four times. And as you get towards the last one, you're just going to keep bending. Try not to snap any strings. But something like that. Um, 
and that is the end of that that kind of middle section at that point we've got back to the the, the bits we already know okay so family terrace we're back at the pre-chorus <laughs> that just like we played before um, back to another chorus again just as we played it before and so on now at the end of this chorus this very final bit of the song and when we get to the um, rather than just doing that once we're going to keep repeating that that octave run okay after that last uh, repetition of the octaves we're all going to hit an A minor chord on beat one, and let it ring out. And hopefully you have a hard stop, got feeding back, or making some nice sounds at this point. And what you need to do is keep count. So as you strum it, that's beat one. So it's going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's four bars of letting it ring out. And then on the very next bar, the fifth bar, you can hit it again. And this time, you can stick a delay on that's got a nice noticeable repeat and there we go song done so check out um, parts two and three for the other guitar bits but that's kind of exactly what I did with with this guitar part mm -hmm.